It's like Dan was saying that, you know, it's so interesting, just like we uh, talk about, as I call it, the Advent season leading up to uh, the birth of Jesus, and then we think that's it, right? No, we got to continue on because once we get through the Christmas presents and all the family dinners and everything, then what? Well, as you can see right there in front of you, the manger, I like to do illustrations a lot, and I see the manger there that really sets the stage not only for the birth of Jesus, but if you look over here, my left would be your right would be the wise man, or as they call magi or magi, however you want to pronounce it. It gives a deeper understanding uh, of what it says in the scriptures. I'm going to go ahead and read that to you of what the wise men are all about, why they came, and all the opposition they faced with King Herod as well. Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And now Bethlehem and the land of Judah are not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. When ye have found him, Bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star, which they saw in the east, went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. May God add his blessing to read of his word. It's so interesting when we read this passage, a lot of times we kind of pass over. We say, ah, you know, that, that's done. He's already been born and all that. But this, this helps set the stage of leading up to, as we see here, the manger of what the wise men uh, were really a strong in instrument in this uh, uh, playing out of his birth because Herod wanted to kill him. He wanted to kill all the, the Jews, he uh, the kids, and he, he wanted to go after this Christ that they said, who is this Christ, as you call him, or this child, or, or uh, this man that, that you say he's going to be the king of the Jews. And, and when they went there, it's interesting that the, the wise men, when they went there and saw that star, like, wow, you know, it's real bright. If you ever walked outside and saw the bright sun and go, whoa, you know, you got to wear the sunglasses. But, you know, it's interesting that when they saw Jesus in Bethlehem, it really made it all worth it. Because when they looked at that star and they saw the star shining and saw where the child was, they really got a deeper understanding of how important this birth was. It wasn't just about the gifts or about the money or anything else. As you see there, the gold, the frankincense, and myrrh is so instrumental of the gifts. We now celebrate with Christmas, with our Christmas tree, and all of our traditions, whether we're in this country or another country, how we celebrate giving gifts to each other at Christmas time, giving gifts to help people in need with all the food banks and with this COVID virus going on. We're doing all we can to help people and give of 
what we want to help people. Look what they did. They did so much more. It's so amazing to see what they gave to Jesus, who they never even heard of before. They heard he was being born. They heard that he was going to this place in Bethlehem. But it's interesting that they came, and when they saw him, they weren't mad or angry or upset or vengeance like Herod wanted and were sent by Herod to, to tell him where Jesus is. No, they went the other way <laughs> into another country because they weren't going to go and tell Herod and warn him because they knew that there was something about this little baby, this little child as, as they saw him. They, they didn't see him as the king of the Jews until probably later, but they saw that there was something about this baby that was more important and was far more higher than what they could understand of their comprehension when they looked at him and they saw him there with Mary and Joseph and the shepherds and all the animals and they looked at that and they go wow this is what it's all about, all about. and when they saw that shining star it's amazing that the scriptures say that when they did that and they rejoiced with exceeding joy then they uh, what did they do next it's amazing they fell down and worshiped him. They didn't run away and get angry or, or hateful like we didn't expect this. No, they rejoiced because they were like, wow, this is really true. This is good stuff. And they looked and they went, huh, okay, we fell down and worshiped him. The next thing they did, they opened their treasures, as I mentioned, with the gold, the frankincense, and myrrh. They didn't go, oh, well, we don't know if we want to give them to him. They gave them to him out of the kindness of their heart, like we usually do with gifts that we give to people Christmas time or any time of the year that somebody needs a helping hand. And we look at that and we we say, as you said earlier in your prayer, thank God for this church that has done so much as far as a Christian church, a loving church. And that's what they were trying to show. There was no buildings back then. There was no structures, as we call it, the church to come into and worship. They worshiped him right there, the stable. Isn't that amazing? You hear the old saying where two or three are gathered, he's in the midst, and all, all those other sayings you hear people say about coming in and we come in to worship the Lord. Yes, we have a great sanctuary, we have lighting and, and heat and everything else that we need to come in here, but they didn't have that. They were out in the cold. They were in a manger. There was no room for him in the end, and he was in a manger. Isn't that amazing? He didn't have that warm heat that we have, that we take for granted. But you know what? They rejoiced because there was something they knew that was bigger than themselves. When they looked at that manger and they saw that little baby, they knew that there was something, a higher power at work there. That's why they didn't go back to Herod. That's why they didn't say, okay, Herod, here he is. No, they went the other way, didn't they? Because they knew that there was something different about this child. There was something different about this experience they went through. And it was interesting as verse 12 lines out why they didn't go back as well, not just because of Herod, but they were warned. They were warned of God in a dream, you know, not to go back to Herod. So it's not only did they know that they shouldn't go back, it's because they were warned of God in a dream not to go back to Herod. Because then they realized, oh, look what Herod's going to do. We can't let that happen. That's not going to happen under our watch. And they, they went back into their own country a different direction, you know, there's three or four different ways to get, to get to where you want to go. What are you going to do? The same old way if somebody knows you're going that way and you don't want them to follow, you're going to go the other way. That's what they did. They went the other direction. So the hair wouldn't follow on or he wouldn't know where they were coming from. And that's what we need to understand. That's such, such an overlooked passage a lot of times that when we preach these messages as preachers, we go, oh yeah, that's nice. I, I, I hear that. But you know what? That really set the stage for how important it was and it is today, when we look at giving gifts, we look at the Christmas tree, we go back to what Jesus did for us, you know, at that manger. Because had he had not came and been born of a manger, he couldn't have came and fulfilled the ultimate gift of dying on the cross for our sins. So we had a great Christmas present right there this year. I know with the pandemic and everything else going on, it's everything's a little different, and social distancing and face masks. But you know what? It's so great to know that when we get close to God, it's amazing to see how much he can do with all of this. I know we talk about the vaccines and everything else. 
But we got a vaccine right there. It's Jesus. I'm not trying to say we should push the river and take our mask off and not obey the laws of the land. We should. But when we look at this and we see how instrumental this was in history of how it plays out in 2020 in our day, this was back when, you know, they didn't have all that stuff that I talked about with the heat and the electric and everything. They were right there in a the barn, right there in a the stable. Isn't that amazing? Some of you understand what I mean as farmers in here, know what a stable is, know how cold it is for your animals. You go out there and put blankets on them. I've had to do that for different farmers I worked for in the past. And, and it's great to see them not get cold. I have to do that with my dog when I go out. I have to cuddle him up and put him in blankets when I take him back inside. But guess what? There was a warmthness about this. That even though he was wrapped in swaddling clothes in the manger, he didn't get frostbitten. He didn't freeze to death because he was Jesus. He's the son of God, king of the Jews. Isn't that amazing? We don't think of that stuff. But when you look at that, you think about all that stuff. You think, wow, can you imagine us trying to be in the manger? I don't think any of us could have cut it back then. In that manger out in the middle of the cold and have all these people coming and you're standing there freezing to death and everybody's trying to give you gifts. No, 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 leave me alone, leave me alone, I'm cold. They didn't do that, did they? No, because there was a bigger event happening here that was bigger than the weather, it was bigger than the cold, it was bigger than them not having room for him in the end. There was reason for that, because he wanted people to realize he came to serve us. He came to the manger to show us how instrumental it was to be a servant. When these wise men came, they saw that. And that's what's so instrumental with us in these days and times we're living in, and Christmas time, and when the decorations are taken down and the Christmas tree is put back away and all of our gifts are either exchanged or, or uh, being used. Let's not forget how important it is for this time of the year of what these shepherds and wise men and all these people that were a part of this great experience. This was the greatest experience that we could ever imagine because like I said, if we hadn't had this experience, we would have taken this for granted. Walking into a church would have just been a building to us. It would just be, oh, okay, that's nice. Okay, time to come home. Yep, I went to church today. No, nope. when they went to church, they didn't have all that stuff. And that's so great. When I look back and see how much they had or how little they had, they did look the best that they could. And that's what we're having to realize now. Sorry to say there was a pandemic had to happen, but I've had a lot of people come to me and say, hey, because of this pandemic or because of this situation, I realize how more important it is. I've talked to people that are celebrating Christmas even more now, and that's something. Sad that it had to take a pandemic for people to realize that. But guess what? He had something even worse back then. He had a man, a Herod, trying to kill him. And God still protected him even as a little baby. And that's what we gotta realize now, how important it is to understand that wise men are so instrumental in this uh, history that that we see played out before our eyes. We see everybody trying to rewrite history now in the news. But you know what? This history can never be rewritten because we understand what it means now. Why did they rejoice exceeding joy? Not just because the sun was bright and bothering them. It, it really was a great thing to see that sun shining. It was a great thing to see, you know, everybody looking and go, wow, who is that in that manger? Wow, that's Jesus. Who? He's not even born yet, you know, and then that's, that's, uh, they saw him as a little child and before he was even named, they knew who he was. And that's great to know that we know that God has a plan for our lives, just like he did for them in the manger, the wise men and uh, Mary and Joseph and Jesus and all of the participants in that uh, manger scene, because that's what God wants us to understand. Don't take anything for granted because God may use you as a wise man or a wise woman to, to reach somebody. It may be a simple act of love or a handshake of, I know it's hard to say that now with everything going on, but just the love and kindness of the, that you give to people, whether it be food, whether it be uh, just to praying for somebody or, hey, I, I'm thinking about you. It doesn't matter what your gift is, but just like they had a gift, we all have gifts too. Some are encouragers, some are prayer warriors, some are, uh, you know, with, like I said, with the food. I had one lady in one of the churches I pastored said, I can't, I don't have a gift. And I said, hey, you do. She said, all I can do is pray and encourage people. I said, well, that's a gift. 
she ended up being one of the most influential Clarksburg, one of the most influential ladies that uh, her, her brother was a deacon and they were really influential in my life and getting me ordained and everything. And, and, and because she was just an encourager, she called it, she was the one that helped the uh, instrument and spearhead the Advent season and then let her without her being the encourager, she called it. I don't know what I could have done for that season. So we don't know how powerful that, that little gift, as you call it, is. It's big to God because God can take something like that and just encourage or just prayer warrior. It means a lot more than we realize because look at those wise men. They were just bringing gifts. They weren't just bringing gifts. They were showing their appreciation, their gratitude, and their love like, thank you. You know, it's it's a gift of gratitude of what they had. I'm not saying you all should be pulling out your pocketbooks and passing out food and money. I'm saying there's gifts that we all have, just like the wise men had, to reach other people for him. Even in Loudonville, Ohio, God can still use you. Yes, he can. You don't have to be in Columbus or Westerville or, or in West Virginia or anywhere else in the country. God can still use you in this little town of Loudonville because he says we're two or three gathered. He's in the midst. So if you can take anything from this uh, season or message or anything that you see around here with all the symbols with the Christmas tree and the bells and all the decorations, remember this one thing, that the gifts that God gives us are without anything that we can ever understand. It's without condition. And we also realize that when we ask him to come into our hearts, that's the greatest gift ever. And that's the gift that we can give. If we can't give anything else to people, give them the gift of Jesus. Let us pray. Thank you, dear Jesus, for what you do in our hearts and our lives. And wow, this may seem uh, really uh, not important to us with these wise men, but when we think of the gifts and we think of what they had, we have a gift too, and it's Jesus. The best gift that we give people is Jesus. Even when the season is over and the Christmas trees are taken down and the decorations are put back in the boxes, Help us to never, ever forget the true meaning of Christmas. And the wise men showed us that. Help us to take that and carry it in our hearts and take it to others that need it and do all that we can to reach others for you. We'll thank and praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.